Mark Soldier. I wasn't going to say anything. I just like to self deprecating humor. And then when they switch to the You all tell me when you're ready. How are we looking? Okay. Javier Becerra, Congressman uh, Becerra from uh, California. I'm the chairman of the House Democratic Caucus. I'm joined by the gentleman from New York, Mr. Crowley, Joe Crowley, who is our vice chairman. We had a session where, in preparation for this week, which is a significant week because we have to make sure that uh, we don't cause American families' interest rates to go up. We have to make sure that we try to keep the economy growing. And the best way to do that is to not tinker with payment of our past due bills as an American country. Uh, we have once again reached this point where we have to extend the debt limit uh, to make sure that we cover the cost of the things that we voted to do, Republicans and Democrats. And we're hoping that our Republican colleagues will get off of this agenda of trying to threaten the full faith and credit of the United States of America by trying to extract concessions uh, by doing this political game of extortion uh, with the debt limit vote. And so if we're able to move forward, as we just heard from uh, uh, Moody Analytics Chief Economist Mark Zandi, then we'll continue to see growth. Uh, a couple of points that Mark Zandi made. If we really want to help the economy, we would pass an unemployment insurance extension. Uh, he mentioned that by not extending the unemployment insurance for Americans who are out of work through no fault of their own, that we might be costing the economy this year some 250,000 to 300,000 jobs. So the sooner we finally get to e extending that emergency unemployment insurance to Americans who are trying to find work but have run out of their insurance benefits, the better off not only will they be because they'll get back to work, but America will be because some 250,000 to 300,000 Americans' jobs are on the line. Mark Zandi also mentioned that we should really move forward on increasing the minimum wage because that also would help the economy and help boost job growth. He talked about trying to make sure that we finish the reform of our broken immigration system. That, he said, would help create jobs. And we believe that if we move forward with 
providing equal pay for equal work, men and women alike, that that will also help the economy and help families, especially families headed by females. But again, that's what Democrats have been talking about doing, and we would hope that this year our Republican colleagues would join us. We want this to be a year of action, the way the President has said. We'd like to make sure that Congress can move on all these important items so that the President can join with us and sign those laws or those bills into the law. And we hope that what we can do is put behind us the game of shutdown politics and finally move towards a serious business of rewarding work and ensuring economic security. That's where we hope we'll go. We hope we'll build on the success of our new health security law, the Affordable Care Act, which has made it possible for over 12 million Americans to finally have health security. Uh, and we hope that what we can do is continue to build on those successes to show the American people that Congress, the White House, were focused on putting Americans back to work and making sure the economy is growing for everyone. With that, let me turn to our Vice Chairman, Mr. Joe Crowley. Thank you, Chairman Becerra. I'll be very brief. I uh, just want to join uh, the Chairman in uh, follow up on his remarks about the positive um, meeting this morning with Mr. Zandi. Uh, his outlook, uh, his anal uh, analysis of uh, the economy uh, and the steady growth uh, that we've seen in this recovery. Uh, he also mentioned, and I'm not sure if the chairman mentioned this as well, that a modest increase in the minimum wage would also be something very positive uh, for the economy. Put more money into the hands of people who spend it and, 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 and in kind help uh, um, uh, improve the economy and to continue this, uh, this growth. Uh, so uh, we appreciate hearing. And one thing about Mr. Zandi is that his words are taken uh, on both sides of the aisle. They are very credible uh, uh, economists uh, for both Democrats and Republicans. We hope our Republican colleagues hear that same message. Uh, and uh, just very quickly on the debt ceiling, uh, the issue we're facing this week, um, I do think uh, the message is getting through that the American people are tired of these man-made crises, and they want to see Congress working uh, together to solve problems. Uh, creating additional problems artificially is not helping us to solve the problems that we need to solve anyway, like uh, immigration reform, for instance, as the chairman mentioned. Uh, so uh, it is our hope that a clean debt ceiling bill uh, will be on the floor this week, uh, and we can put this uh, ahead of us. We can't put it behind us, put it ahead of us. Uh, and uh, uh, really, uh, United States of America, we pay our bills. Uh, and we should not be playing games with the full faith and credit of our country. The American people understand that. They have to do it every day. They expect their government to do it. Uh, and I think the results of not doing that would have been, for many people, catastrophic. An increase in interest rates right now would not be good for government, and it certainly would not be good for the American people as well. So with that, we'll turn it back to the chairman. And uh, before I take any, we take any questions, and we're going to have a short period because we have to get to committee, I just did want to mention that uh, come Wednesday, building on what we heard from Mark Zandi today, uh, House Democrats will gather to have our issues conf conference that we do every year to get ready for not just 2014, but the future. And uh, did want to make note that we're going to have some spectacular guests with us. We're going to have Dr. Kim of the World Bank, the head of the World Bank, who will address our members and talk about how not only do we grow our economy, but we help make sure the world economy is growing so that we can all benefit from that. We have individuals as renowned as uh, Tom Friedman, uh, Nobel winner and economist uh, Joe Stiglitz, um, the forever fighter uh, Marion Wright Edelman, we have the leader in so many respects of the, the emerging communities of America, Janet Murguia, who is the head of uh, the National Council of La Raza. We have any number of folks who are going to be coming, not least of which will be the President of the United States and the Vice President as well. And so we're looking forward to a couple of days of real conversation, opportunity to work with our colleagues and to work with a number of other folks sure that what we do is come up with a strong agenda that really moves us to action to try to help lift Americans so that we finally can say that that American dream is achievable for all aspiring Americans. With that, we'll take some questions. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll go for straight. We've always said that we should not be uh, playing a game of political extortion 
with paying our country's debt, uh, that we don't want to jeopardize the full faith and credit of the United States of America. We don't want to see interest rates rise on the mortgages of so many Americans or the car loans or the student loans of so many uh, Americans. And so for us, getting our work done is just something basic, fundamental that we should be doing. So if it means paying for what we said we wanted to do, Republicans and Democrats alike, we should do it. And we should do it without playing this game of shutdown politics or extortion, political extortion, to, to extract things that have nothing to do with paying our bills for the things we voted to do. So, Joe? I just want to make, add a point to that, and that is it's been rumored that's the case or has been reported that that's the case. I think Javier, myself, and our caucus uh, will remain to see whether or not the bill actually comes to the floor. Uh, and um, I do think there would be... Um, uh, saying broad support would be putting it mildly. I think Democrats have been asking, our leader Nancy Pelosi has been asking for a clean debt ceiling. Uh, the president has asked for a clean debt ceiling, has demanded a clean debt ceiling. And I think there will be broad support within the Democratic caucus for a clean debt ceiling bill. We want to make sure we're responsible. And if, if we voted at some point in the past as Republicans and Democrats for a budget, then we should be pre prepared to pay for it. And so if you voted for the Iraq war, you shouldn't make seniors on Medicare pay for the money was spent in the Iraq war. Other questions? Well, I was yeah. going to ask you if you could carry the vote on the debt ceiling, because the Republicans are saying some of them I love these questions about whether Democrats will be able to carry the vote, carry the day in the House of Representatives in the minority. Uh, this feels like Alice in Wonderland totally upside down. The majority is supposed to be the, the party that moves us forward because they run the, the ship. Yet, as we've seen time and time again, our Republican colleagues have not been able to run the ship. And as a result, they've had to constantly turn to Democrats to provide the votes, votes to move responsibly forward with our economy, with immigration reform, with unemployment insurance, with uh, the minimum wage, what we hope is that it will be a bipartisan vote to do the responsible thing, to pay for the things that we voted to do. And if that's the case, then this country will move forward and that will be a good sign for 2014. But if Republicans shirk their responsibility as the majority party in the House of Representatives and leave it to the minority party, we're ready to be responsible, we're ready to lead, and we're ready to take action. We hope our Republican colleagues would join us. I'll just say briefly, I, I do think that the American people, the world is watching this vote, will watch this vote if this is a clean debt ceiling. Uh, the numbers will speak for themselves if a majority, although a majority of Democrats join with some, uh, a minority of the Republicans in the caucus have passed the bill, that will not go unnoticed. Um, but the notion or idea that uh, let's see if the Democrats can pass it, uh, last time I checked, if every Democrat voted for it, we would still be 17 votes shy because we don't have enough Democrats in the House to have the majority. We're striving for that. We're working towards that. We hope at the end of this year that that'll turn around. Uh, but until that point, uh, obviously, if this bill is going to pass, it'll have to be done in a bipartisan way. And if I could just make sure I add one last thing. The minority party cannot pass or kill any bill. There aren't enough votes, as the vice chairman just said, to do that. The majority party is the only party that can pass or kill a bill. Uh, who else? Wait, go ahead. Um, the fact that this seems the same shows all over again, you see these trial balloons floated from House Republicans, ultimately it's a clean one that goes to the floor. What, is, what does that say about the leadership um, of the House? Well, I, you need to ask the Republicans what that says about Republican leadership, that they are having to count on Democrats to do their work for them. But again, let's, let's see if they'll be responsible. Uh, let's see what they put up. We're ready to be responsible. We hope they are as well. I'll just add to that. It is a recognition, again, of the lack of, that if, if you want to get it done, you have to do it in a bipartisan way, work with Democrats to make that happen. Um, the reality is uh, that this is not new, if this was the case. Uh, just about every piece of major legislation has gone through in a bipartisan way has gone uh, just the exact same way as, as we hope this debt ceiling will, will go as well. Last question. Sure, the, there's uh, reports by Trump reporters such as Kim saying that immigration... You better, you, you're going to publish that, right? You just got a, you got kudos from your... Yeah. Uh, <laughs>
The system of our immigration laws is completely broken. When you have a mother being separate, separated from her children, a mother whom almost everyone in Congress says should not be separated from her child, um, something's wrong. When you have a system that doesn't let us track if terrorists are coming into the country or not, something is wrong. There are folks that are very passionate about this principally the folks who are going to be personally impacted by our, uh, by watching Congress, specifically House Republicans, do nothing on immigration reform. And so it would not surprise me to see that Americans take up the tried and true process of advocacy, of lobbying for what they think is important. And I think you're going to find a lot of folks, not just immigrants, not just advocates of immigrants, but a lot of Americans, a lot of businessmen and women, a lot of farmers saying, to members of Congress who are playing politics with us, get off the dime, get this done. Everyone in America knows that if we fix our broken immigration system, it's good for the country. Joe. I would just say that uh, on most issues, the, the American people aren't necessarily paying that much attention. Um, on this particular issue, the advocates are paying attention to every word that the speaker says. Uh, one week, it's well, well, looks like we'll get something done. The next week, well, it looks like we this may be off again. The next week, we'll, well, we're back on track, constantly back and forth. Uh, and I think if the track record is any indication of the ability of the majority in the House of Representatives, the Republicans, to actually tackle the tough issues of our country, you know, it leaves a lot of people to be skeptical about that. And what happens is uh, I think people, uh, as the, the chairman has said, are very passionate about this issue and are going to, uh, as he said, take this uh, and, and demonstrate or to challenge uh, those who uh, express opposition to comprehensive reform. It's something that I think we will get done at some point. The question is when. And I think the advocates are saying we need to do it right now, and I agree with them. We need to run. Thanks all very much.